afternoon. Welcome to EduSet Network. Friend, as you know, this week we organized a series of lectures on uh, freedom of struggle, and particularly we talked about Indian scientists, three Indian scientists. But today we'll, we'll talk about and about the uh, painter, the painter par excellence, Amrita Sergil, about her life and work. And I would all like to also add that this year is being celebrated as 100th anniversary of her. So it's a good time to recall and pay tribute to the painter of our excellence, Amrita Sergil. And for discussion on this very topic, we have in the studio Dr. Jain Sinha, an academician, eminent historian, and he regularly contributes in different newspaper and journals, international and, uh, and national also. So uh, and his area of exp uh, work is uh, science and technology, and also he uh, writes about the art and uh, artistic values and appreciation of the art. So I think his knowledge and experience will help us to understand uh, about the uh, Amrita Sergi life and work. So on your behalf, I welcome him for the Edsert lecture. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, as has been said, uh, today uh, we are going to discuss uh, about the life and work of Amrita Sherwil. <coughs> uh, this year is the 100th year of her birth, and so uh, this will be our tribute to her also. Amrita Sherwil was a great painter, and in fact, one of the founders of modern painting in this country. But uh, unfortunately, we don't know much about her, especially the lay public, they don't know about her. Also because her life was very short, she died at the age of 28. <clears throat> and uh, also because uh, she always remained in some type of controversy because her way of life and attitude towards things around her. Nevertheless, less, she was a most talented artist, a great painter, one of the greatest painters of this country, and a great woman in the history of India. So we will uh, try to know much more about her. <clears throat> Amrita Shergil uh, was born at Budapest. She was uh, the daughter of a Sikh father and Hungarian mother. <clears throat> Her father, Umrao Singh, uh, came from a royal family of Punjab, uh, Majitia, that area called Majitia. And uh, they had establishments at different places, including at Amritsar, Lahore, Simla, and near Gorakhpur. So she came from a, an aristocratic family. Her father, Umrao Singh, was an aristocrat, intellectual, and a man of many interests. He was also a philanthropist. <coughs> Her, uh, Umrao Singh's father, uh, grandfather, uh, was the general of Ranjit Singh, the great uh, Sikh uh, uh, king of Punjab. Uh, but um, after the debacle of uh, Punjab, uh, defeat of uh, Ranjit Singh, he was uh, the commander, Umrao Singh, Singh's grandfather, he was exiled from Punjab and had to come to Banaras where he lived. <coughs> uh, as this uh, story was going on, uh, the family continued to live at different places. We won't go into the details of that story. We are here, we are much concerned about uh, Amrita Shergil, one of the daughters of the family. Uh, the story goes uh, that uh, uh, a daughter of uh, Ranjit Singh's son, who was living in Britain, uh, came to India uh, to find a suitable uh, boy for, uh, to marry. Along with her also came a Hungarian opera singer, Mary Antoinette. <clears throat> when she, the, the duo met with Umrao Singh, father of uh, Amrita Shergil, uh, uh, Umrao Singh liked that piano, uh, opera singer, uh, Mary Antoinette, 
and they married. They married in uh, uh, 1912, and immediately after the marriage, uh, Umrao Singh and Mary Antoinette, they went to Budapest in Hungary. Uh, in fact, the planning was that they will live there forever. So, uh, before leaving for uh, Budapest, uh, Umrao Singh distributed his share of property among his sons from his earlier marriage, and he went to Budapest. Uh, they continued to live there. <coughs> uh, there uh, was um, Amrita Shergil was born in Budapest in 1913, and she lived there. She was educated uh, in Budapest, and after that, for a specialized education in arts, fine arts, she was sent to uh, Italy uh, and then to Paris in France. There she was properly <coughs> trained as a painter. And from the very beginning, she showed the traits of a great painter. She was a genius. And at a very young age, she was awarded several prizes in Paris, which used to be a capital of uh, fine arts uh, at that time and perhaps even now. <coughs> so this is her mm -hmm. earlier story. Uh, at that time, um, <coughs> Amrita Shergil uh, had lived a, uh, life of something like a, a bohemian, and uh, her life was not as stable. She kept on moving from place to place, and uh, uh, this created a lot of problems between her and um, her parents. The parents didn't like <coughs> uh, her uh, way of life, and they objected to that, and this led to Sorry. <coughs> this led to a, 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 a lot of problems. And uh, anyway, <coughs> uh, the things were moving on like that, but uh, ulti ultimately, <coughs> ultimately, uh, there came the First World War, and, <coughs> and during the First World War, uh, there was now another problem, and the, com the uh, family was compelled to come back to India again. That, that was a peculiar situation. <clears throat> but anyways, this was peculiar because initially, um, Umrao Singh and his wife, they had planned to settle in Budapest. And uh, now they were compelled to return to their native place in India. So the family was for some time uh, stranded in Europe. Um, uh, and somehow, ultimately, they um, managed to come to India. But even at that time, the problems were there because they came from Hungary. And uh, in the <coughs> um, power equation of that uh, time, the British considered that country not very friendly. More than that, they also suspected that Umrao Singh did have some secret liaison with the members of the revolutionary Gadar party. So the British government was concerned and they were not allowing Umrao Singh to return to India. That, th this was a problem, but anyway, ultimately with the intervention of the younger son, uh, younger brother of Umrao Singh, uh, Mr. Sundar Singh Majithia, who was member of the Legislative Council of the Viceroy, uh, somehow he was able to procure permission for the entry of Umrao Singh and his wife with um, their children uh, to India, and the family returned back in 1921 to India. They went to their native place in uh, Amritsar. They lived there at Lahore, at Simla, and several other places. But after that, Amrita Shergil uh, went on a tour of uh, South India, Central and South India. In the meanwhile, she 
<coughs> she has uh, had been um, making um, paintings, uh, doing a lot of uh, artistic work. But first of all, before settling in India, she wanted to have a look at the whole country. So she traveled widely in Central and South India. She went to Bombay. Uh, from Bombay, uh, she also went to Hyderabad, then to Kerala, Trivandrum, Cochin, then to present Tamil Nadu, uh, Madurai, and Kanyakumari, and several other places. She also went to Ajanta and Elora in Maharashtra. <clears throat> After visiting these places, this modern painter uh, underwent a great change in her attitude and almost everything, philosophy of life. There was a transformation in Amrita Sergil on a very fundamental level. Now onwards, she was mesmerized by the, after seeing the paintings uh, in South India, uh, especially of, um, after seeing the cave paintings in extreme south that was uh, uh, in Tamil Nadu and Kerala, uh, she was also immensely impressed by the frescoes which she saw uh, near Cochin <coughs> and also other um, uh, works of painting and other artistic collections in Trivandrum and elsewhere there. Then she came to uh, North in, uh, Central India and again she was impressed by um, the uh, art of Ajanta and Elora. Finally, she moved from there and she came uh, north of the Vindhyas and she visited Mathura. Again, Mathura was a very pleasant surprise for her. She, she was impressed by the painting collections of um, architecture which was uh, available for her inspection uh, at Mathura. And thereafter, she decided that um, then onwards, she will paint India in a different color and in a different form. She decided to <clears throat> leave her European style of painting and instead, she wanted to paint India uh, in a new form, somewhere uh, uh, having a rhythm uh, with the local society and culture. So locally she had seen that uh, though there were intricacies uh, in fine arts, but in countries, the country was very much colorful and simple also. So the poverty of the uh, country, its uh, so-called backwardness, uh, impressed her very much. Uh, but unlike other people, uh, she, she was uh, uh, not worried about the poverty of the country and the so-called backwardness. Rather, she started looking at the beauty and grace uh, to be seen uh, amidst, amid uh, poverty that how there was a great beauty in the faces of poor people, humble, um, unrecognized people. So this was now onwards the theme of her painting, the simplicity, the color, at times the variety and contradictions of colors, etc. So after her South Indian <coughs> uh, visit and uh, her visit at the Capes in extreme south, uh, then Ajanta and Elora, and finally Mathura, she decided to change her style. <clears throat> Rather, she de declared uh, in her writings uh, that uh, uh, Europe no longer belonged to her, though there was a very deep connection with Europe for Amrita Sergil because she was born of a European mother, Hungarian mother, and she was born not in India, rather uh, in Europe at Budapest. There was a deep biological relation, but she sent it, and she now decided that she will have another type form of painting which won't be um, European, rather it will be Indian in style, though she, she was not ready to follow or revive the traditional heritage of painting in this country uh, as at Ajanta and Elora. Uh, in fact, 
this type of painting at Ajanta and Delora had been uh, revived by the Bengali school. And uh, she uh, was not very appreciative because she considered that, okay, it was a fine tradition, it was a great tradition, but India now needed something which was vital, which was different, and which really depicted the realities in the country. And that reality was to be <coughs> explained in terms of its poverty, its backwardness, its oppression, oppression by the British Raj, oppression within the local archaic social system, and lo uh, <coughs> oppression at the individual uh, relations also. For example, between men and women, oppression of women. So all these things became themes for her new creations. <coughs> With this idea, she started painting in India, mostly, mostly living at Simla. The Simla did have their family home, and she stayed there. Her life was very glamour, um, glamorous, coming from an aristocratic family. Uh, she was extremely beautiful, uh, she was energetic, she was vocal, she was talented. So very soon she came in limelight and uh, she became f very famous. She was a prolific writer also, uh, especially she was prolific in writing personal letters. So hundreds of letters have been found which uh, uh, reflect her thinking and the uh, uh, history uh, of, the, uh, of that time. So even now, though there was uh, change in heart and her mind, but she continued to do some painting which can be considered close to European style, and that is mainly um, her paintings of portraits of individuals. Uh, so that was a necessity also, because being a painter at that time, it demanded that it, her painting should be sold also. And so for selling painting, not everyone going to, was going to like something abstract theme. So mostly people at that time, that was a feudal society, kings and nobles, etc., they wanted to have their portraits. And Amrita Shergil uh, painted these portraits for some time. <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, these uh, paintings, uh, um, gradually, uh, there was <coughs> a, a change. <coughs> and that change came in uh, different forms. Uh, while living, uh, here uh, one, we can see a painting of earlier days, which she, she perhaps she Paris, um, painted in Paris. Uh, this is uh, one of her sisters and two guests there. This was, a, though it was a different, a, a little different uh, from other paintings, um, but it's very much close to the European style. So after that, uh, this is, uh, after that uh, in Simla, uh, <coughs> there was change. And from there, from Simla, apart from um, painting the portraits, she also painted certain um, um, people from the local society. <coughs> and those people, they were hillmen, so she painted the, her famous painting, The Hillman. Uh, she painted it uh, in Simla. And uh, uh, they, this is a, another painting uh, I'm showing, uh, which she painted about the Indian life. Here we can see the simplicity of Indian life. Uh, what was a changed style uh, was first that uh, she simplified the uh, figures. She always simplified the intricacies of human body and uh, their figure. So she made simple lines. And through those simple rhymes, she uh, tried to uh, project the reality of life. For example, here in the group of people with a child and uh, ladies, uh, we can see the simplicity of life. And uh, we don't see the exuberance there. So simple, uh, very humble, and this was the beauty of uh, rural India. So th these type of themes <coughs> became important for her. 
the other things uh, she painted there uh, continue to be between European and Indian. But gradually things change. In the meanwhile, she kept on going to Europe also. Um, this is, uh, she had come to India in uh, 1921, but after that she kept on going there. Uh, after Euro, uh, the Indian visit in South India, she went to Europe also, and she continued to paint. <coughs> Finally, she married. Uh, she was unmarried until now. Finally, she married uh, one of her uh, cousin brothers, uh, <coughs> uh, Victor, uh, uh, Victor Egan. Uh, he was again from Hungary. Uh, she uh, married her. And now the duo, both of them, came to India to settle forever. In the 30s, they came here in the 30s. Uh, the, um, but the problem was <coughs> where to settle. Uh, because uh, even uh, Umrao Singh did have problem about that. Uh, since he had distributed his property while living for, for Budapest, uh, when he came to India, almost uh, uh, his uh, stay f here forever was a problem in the fact that uh, virtually nothing uh, as a property for him. So anyway, uh, there were some sources for his income and uh, finally they settled in Simla and of course the family establishments were there in Amritsar uh, and uh, Gorakhpur. So ultimately, it was decided that Amrita Shergil and uh, Victor Egan, uh, they will settle at their family estate uh, in, a, uh, in the village Saraya at Gorakhpur. Uh, Saraya was a family estate, uh, uh, a jagi received from the British, and there was a, another village called Dumri. <coughs> at Dum uh, Dumri was part of that Jagir. So she um, uh, came to a stay at Saraya. At Saraya, the family did have one of the largest sugar factories in India. And the, here, there was a lavish establishment. So it was understood that Amrita um, Sher will, uh, will enjoy the place being an artist. She will have peaceful time and she will uh, paint there. So this was the uh, uh, earlier understanding there. So she came to Sreya in the mid-1930s. They settled there. Her husband, Victor, was appointed. <coughs> he was by profession a doctor, and <coughs> he was appointed at the sugar factory. And Amrita Shergil worked as a freelance painter. Uh, she was very active here, and in fact, uh, she painted for several, um, going by the general references, her routine, almost she painted uh, 10 to 12 hours every day. And she created one of her best paintings uh, at Saraya. Uh, in Saraya, uh, the, their sugar factory was there and the family lived within the great walls surrounding the sugar factory. <coughs> but uh, later on, she realized that um, contrasted with the luxury which was uh, apparently seen within the boundary in their family, uh, across the wall, there was a, a ocean of poverty and backwardness and destitute and disease, epidemics uh, and famine. So this was a horrible life just outside the wall of the sugar factory, which Amrita Sergil noted very seriously and with great empathy. So gradually she came out of the walls of the sugar factory. So she visited all the locality there and after that so there was another change in her life and way of living and painting. Now she was much more simple. Uh, after seeing the paintings and cave paintings and uh, uh, sculptures in South India, she had decided that she will no longer find as ideal the European style of painting. Instead, she will go for the Indian style. And she will add further new to just reflect the realities in modern India. 
After coming to Saraya, she added more dimensions to her work and that was simplicity. That was just to find and project uh, the goodness in poverty, the grace in poverty. So this was a new dimension in, and it was entirely new dimension because before, the, before that uh, time, whatever schools uh, were available there, for example, Bombay school that was following the European style and they were only painting, mostly painting portraits of kings and nobles and important persons. And the whole activities of painting was confined to, uh, to this type of works. Amrita Shergil didn't like that. On the other side, the Bengali school, it wanted to revive uh, the, the tradition of Ajanta and Elora, though some of them a little later started looking at ground realities also, but by and large, the Bengali school uh, by, uh, presented uh, by Jamini Rai and Nandlal Bose, Rabindranath Tagore, uh, they were trying to bring about a revival of uh, Indian painting tradition, art tradition. So Amrita Shergil contrasts, contrasted with them, she was a, a different painter and she wanted to paint and project the reality of the country and reality is not connected with the upper strata of society, kings and noble and important person. Rather, now she focused on the poor man, on the destitute, on the persons living in the remote villages and their life. Even within her own walls, um, in upper class families, she also noted the agony and um, oppression of women living in upper uh, class families also. And she created <coughs> many paintings um, indicating those type of things. For <coughs> what the change came in, it can be seen here in this painting, the simplicity of village life. This is a ritual of, uh, with the, uh, to be a, a bride. And in this ritual, uh, we can see how even poor people uh, have some grace. They are looking beautiful. <coughs> Likewise, she painted se several other paintings also. Uh, the lady on Charpoi, uh, if uh, uh, one can see that painting, uh, that was depiction of a woman coming from upper class family. And they, there, she reflects, uh, she tries to show the agony and oppression in her mind. That lady, though she is resting, uh, resting woman on Charpoi, uh, it seems that it's a type of luxury, but the face and total gesture and the slant indicates her, you know, her mental agony and the suffering of uh, oppression, maybe of the males and their husbands, something like that. That also reflects her psychological and sexual uh, inclinations also. So Amrita Shergil, <clears throat> another thing, first the, uh, the focus was on the poverty and rural life, destitute, poor people. Then her uh, another theme was uh, women. Uh, she was concerned about them and living it um, at Saraya, uh, she was closely watching the people in her family and also all those supporting the family, means uh, caretakers, uh, maid servants, etc. And she was quite friendly with them, uh, though uh, being friendly of a person from the upper caste with the maid servant, it was not liked very much in those days. But despite that, she was very friendly to them and she sympathized and empathized with them. And in, fa in fact, she created many paintings depicting those type of poor people uh, living in amid uh, poverty. So this was, women were uh, another area she painted it. And that way, she may be considered one of the earliest painter, one of the earliest persons, intellectual, reflecting on the problems of women. Uh, one can say that uh, Ajanta and Elora are full of the figures of women, true. But there, the main intention of the painter is not to reflect their problems 
their psyche, uh, their operation, not. It is something connected with a religious ritual, rather there as a beauty which was not in reality in the poor people. There is depiction at Janta Elora of the beauty of rich people, a people have, having a lot of privileges. But Amrita Sergil painted the poor people who didn't have any privilege. And she wanted to project their operation. And of course, understandably, that projection was to, uh, to indicate a fight against that type of operation at that time. Amrita Sergil was doing all this in the 1930s. <clears throat> this was the reason why some of the contemporaries uh, noted her talent and they liked her also. For example, uh, a woman uh, of great eminence at that time, um, <clears throat> Sarojini Naidu, she was very much fond of Amrita Shergil. And in fact, when Amrita Shergil visited uh, Hyderabad, <clears throat> uh, she was the state guest there. And uh, Amta Sergil was very much praised by Sarojini Naidu. Uh, others also noted her um, uh, talent. For example, Jawaharlal Nehru, he liked her very much. He liked her painting and as a person, he, he liked her also. So, so was Gandhi. Though I doubt she ever met Gandhi, but after her death, Gandhi uh, wrote a very uh, letter of condolence in a very t touching words. He wrote it to her mother. So she became so famous uh, with uh, the approach towards painting. So we have talked about uh, poverty, about uh, women. Likewise, <coughs> she had great fascination for animals. She painted several paintings uh, of animals, uh, <coughs> of uh, elephants, uh, of uh, camels. You can see elephants and camel on the left side uh, is the animal that he chose uh, elephant. Uh, always he tried to project uh, something what, which was graceful, which was great, even in odd, odd situation. So in elephant you can see how the massive animal uh, is uh, reflecting a type of uh, <coughs> a grace and dignity. She showed it there. Likewise, she painted um, uh, camels. Uh, she painted, uh, this is on the right side, we can see the camels. You, you note the, the mood of the camel, uh, the mood of the camel driver. Uh, the camels are resting. They are very peaceful. They are very graceful. And they are earthy. Their color is uh, something like a color of uh, earth. And in that, you can see a cloth in red color that shows the life there. This was a style of Amrita Shergil that uh, in a general dull situation, she will put in some bright colors to show the flame of life. This was uh, her style. <coughs> she uh, also painted some of her famous painting uh, of uh, elephants. Uh, of elephants, just simple to look at, uh, bathing in a pool, in a village pool, and uh, with green uh, mosses. Uh, this is not an extraordinary scene to paint, but she painted it, and there also she shows how the destiny of man and animal uh, is meeting together at in that pool. The Mahat is there, the animal, great animal is there. That is a scene of simplicity everywhere, and that simplicity also constituted the poverty and backwardness of that area. In fact, her, her fascination for elephant was so strong that very often elephants in huge number, maybe five or six or ten, they were called in and they uh, stood before us are as models, and Amrita Shergil uh, painted them uh, in, with minute details there. She was so much fascinated by elephant that she um, visited the famous Mela uh, Fair of Elephants uh, at uh, Sonpur in Bihar. She was living in Gorakhpur and going to Sonpur at that time. It was not very easy affair. 
I read from her diaries and other sources that she visited the place there possibly by car and when she went there and saw the huge number of elephants, she was extraordinarily thrilled. She was very happy. So this was <coughs> her way of looking at things. Likewise, going into the details of family life, uh, she painted uh, numerous paintings of women just simply uh, talking, sitting together, some doing some uh, a small ritual or household wo work and that uh, presents uh, the beauty of that simple village life at that time. In fact, uh, one of her costliest paintings uh, was created at Saraya and it depicts only the assemblies of the family with some animals, uh, maybe uh, a dog, uh, just in the courtyard of a family and with very simple flowers, hibiscus and a few other type of flowers there. This is the um, subject matter of that painting which has faced um, Amrita's painting, the highest price, uh, probably uh, 6 crore, uh, 90 lakhs in um, it was a huge, it's a huge price for any painter anywhere. And the theme is so simple. So all these things, what I'm saying, that Amrita was <coughs> different, different from all other Indian painters at that time. <coughs> she has painted bullock carts. Uh, she has painted uh, bullock carts uh, uh, going to sugar factory, her own sugar factory, carrying sugar cane uh, for selling it at the factory. So this, these were simple things, day-to-day -day life uh, of the village people. Uh, but uh, what it shows that her main focus no, was no longer the urban life or the urban people of upper strata, rather her focus has shifted to village India and the poor people and simpler things of life there from bullock cart to dog to camel to elephant or something like that. We can see all these developments uh, in a parallel development in politics. We may recall that this was period of India's freedom struggle also and we can see that in 1920s onwards uh, in the main focus of the Indian National Congress was shifted to, uh, from the town, shifted to village India. When Gandhi came, he get, gave a call for rural reconstruction. And this rural re reconstruction uh, delved into several things which appeared to be insignificant for urban people or leaders of those time. Many people doubted Gandhi's uh, wisdom about that, but Gandhi insisted on that and he, took, he went for the promotion of village cottage industry. He talked about a goat, simple goat. Here we can see Abrita is painting a simple <coughs> bullock, uh, <coughs> bullock cart and uh, she is uh, painting elephant, um, camels. So there is similarity between Gandhi and Amrita Shergil. Gandhi is doing all these things in political and social arena. Amrita Shergil is uh, doing all these things in the field of painting and fine arts. But the purpose is the same. She also wants to project, uh, project the importance of vill village India, rural India. She is no wonder fascinated, and she is no longer fascinated uh, by the glamours of urban life. Rather, she is empathizing <coughs> with the poor people of that area. <coughs> so this was a parallel development. Next, uh, which is equally important, <coughs> is her total gesture uh, towards the poor people and national movement also. Occasionally, Amrita Shergil <coughs> is uh, criticized uh, for the fact that uh, she led a glamorous life. Uh, she was in luxury. She was not concerned actually for the poor people and she was not thinking about the freedom, freedom movement. Uh, after going through her correspondence and several uh, detailed histories of that time, 
I concluded uh, that um, this uh, uh, criticism cannot stand <coughs> a scrutiny. In fact, uh, she was in a stage um, which we can say that that was a stage uh, which we call in uh, Indian traditional philosophy, Karuna. Uh, karuna, uh, the closer uh, English word is compassion, though the word doesn't carry the exact meaning, but nevertheless uh, it will uh, suffice to bring some component of what Karuna means. So she was at the stage of Karuna and she was so much moved by the poverty and by quietness and oppression of the common people that uh, she was not in a position to cry for that, which happens in Karuna. Rather, she empathized, she thought that she is the part of that sorrow, that grief, that pain, <coughs> and that oppression. And that way, she started uh, looking into the beauty in that crisis and the beauty of the poor surrounding and poor people. This had, uh, uh, it, some people may think that this is hyper, hyperbolic statement. Uh, it, it is too much that uh, to con uh, compare her with uh, such an idea uh, of Karuna, uh, maybe uh, with Lord Buddha also. <coughs> Uh, but I have reason to believe, a little for that at least, uh, that uh, sh she was somehow fascinated towards Buddha also. And living at uh, Gorakhpur, she was close to Banaras, uh, the confluence of all cultural traditions and all philosophical traditions of India. Banaras is the confluence of all these traditions. This was also the area of Kabir. The area of our of Kabir is almost uh, 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 in the neighborhood. Likewise, she also visited Kusinagar, the um, site of um, Bhagwan Buddha's uh, Mahaparinirvan. And I saw some writing, and her um, uh, friend Khandelwala writes later on that how thrilled she was after visiting Kusinagar, the, um, the place of uh, Buddha's Mahaparinirvan. So somehow, uh, I guess that there is some understanding on idea, uh, level of idea, and there was a real understanding what karuna means. And that was the situation in which she was living at that time. For this, there are also some personal reasons <coughs> about Amrita Shergil. Uh, because uh, Amrita Shergil was very young, she had lived a very lavish life in Europe at Budapest and Paris and elsewhere. But now she was brought to live in a village in remote India. This was a peculiar situation. This situation became all the more worse that she was having a very bitter relation uh, with her parents, especially her mother. The correspondence indicates uh, that the letters of her mother were always extremely painful, very painful. Uh, and it could have the similar effect on us also. So she was extremely disturbed at that time. And the situation might have warranted her committing society, uh, suicide. But she didn't do that. Instead, she just entered into another cave of her life, leaving her personal life, personal background, life of personal background away and she entered into another world of poor people living in Gorakhpur area. And she now started thinking about that and she, because she was uh, not so much active, she was not in a position to something do very substantial in material terms for the local people. So she, what could she do was painting their life, and she painted that. So this was a, a, a very painful situation, uh, but that was the reason why she painted those type of themes at that time. Anyway, uh, Amrita Shergil lived for, for there for about three or four years at um, uh, Saraya and Dumri, and she painted her one of the greatest creations there. 
she lived with uh, her Victor uh, husband, Victor Egan, and uh, from there she visited several local areas also. She was fascinated by the area, uh, but be, having been brought up in Europe, there were problems of climate. Uh, perhaps see, uh, the, the local geogra geographical situation was not conducive for her. Uh, there was heat, there was dust, uh, there was a lot of humidity. Uh, she was always uh, fed up of that. And then there was disease, pestilence, epidemics. So all these things created a huge problem for her. More than that, she was always in isolation. That family members were in great number there, but they didn't have uh, much interest in her painting. There was hardly anyone to talk about her work or about any work in fine arts. So ultimately, she got fed up with the situation, and some, uh, some type of mental problem emerged with her. She became uh, very much afraid of something uh, which might have happened, something assumed problem. So ultimately, uh, husband of wife, uh, they decided to leave the place and they went to uh, Lahore in 1941. And there they settled, they uh, created their studio there. They were going very fine. They were extremely happy. In the meanwhile, uh, on the night of uh, uh, December 5 and 6, uh, in 1941, all of a sudden she fell ill and she died. Uh, she couldn't be um, saved, the doctors rushed there, but they couldn't save her, and th thus came the, her end. Uh, Amrita Sergal died, and finally uh, she was uh, cremated there with uh, Sikh rituals uh, at Lahore. Uh, in a very sober and small gathering gathered there. And thus came the end of uh, that great lady who left this world at the age of uh, 28. She was a great woman. Uh, she is uh, uh, dead, but definitely her is, um, spirit is extremely inspiring even today. OK. As I explained, she touched so many things. Uh, subjects or <coughs> so many topics and uh, with precision yeah. so and uh, what is just uh, striking is that in the short span of like 28 years thinking about this and reflecting in printing it uh, sometimes uh, for a common uh, mind doesn't gel with that how she yeah, could it do was this possible. but she was she was genius she was extraordinary she was not a common person she would paint for 10 hours or 12 hours all together Yes, and, uh, though her life was very glamorous, she was extremely moody, she mm -hmm. was fond of uh, uh, traveling here and there, but if came something in her mind, she will paint it, and she will finish it. That was, she will paint, uh, um, uh, if I recall exactly, uh, in Saraya, at some stage, mm -hmm. she was painting four paintings at the same time. Four and she, Yes, and she had divided timing for each of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she was extraordinary. And the understanding of subject is also important. That was also yes, very. She she was keen observer of things, and she uh, her father writes mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we couldn't understand that uh, we could see a table or chair is lying in the drawing room, but she will stand there and look at that for very long time, maybe for an hour. So there she was looking at things and perceiving them mm -hmm. in a different manner than others could do it. Okay. So that was problem, and that thing you can note in her painting also. There is flash of something original in the same simple shape. Yeah, that is the thing. Yes, <laughs> she was original in her thinking, yeah, original always, in her observations, and, mm. and also reflected on the pen, uh, <coughs> painting. Uh, yes, yes. And you also compare mm. to some way the the karuna of um, uh, Lord yeah. Buddha. Yeah. So yeah. it was because of the visiting to the place Kusinagar. After that, yeah. she started uh, trying to find out the Buddha imprint 
इम्प्रिंट ऑफ द लाइफ यस यस और मैं तो हिंदी में बोल रहा हूँ मैं तो चाहूँगा कि उस गोरखपुर के आसपास के जो लोग हों वो जा कर के उस प्लेस को देखें जहाँ वो रहती थी अभी भी है वो प्लेस है सारे वो बिल्डिंग्स हैं अभी खरा वहाँ सरैया में शुगर फैक्ट्री के अंदर है और जाकर पता करें चूँकि वहाँ पर उस फैमिली को लेकर थोड़ा लोगों को प्रॉब्लम रहता है कि दे वेर प्रो ब्रिटिश लेकिन दैट इज वन थिंग अमृता शेरगिल इज क्वाइट डिफरेंट और उसी फैमिली के अमृता शेरगिल के जो फादर थे वो रेवोल्यूशनरी ग्रुप के साथ मिले हुए थे तो केवल एक लेवल लगा कर नहीं बल्कि इसके वाइडर पर्सपेक्टिव में अमृता शेरगिल को लोग सेलिब्रेट करें कि वो सरैया ने उनको थीम प्रोवाइड किया जिसने वर्ल्ड के टॉप पेंटिंग को क्रिएट कराया ओके सो इन द बिगनिंग वाई डिड सी जो सरैया फॉर द In fact, she didn't choose it. Okay. She was sent there by her family okay. because there was establishment. Hmm. Of course, they had a very lavish establishment there. Uh, they were having all the cars later on, or maybe uh, yes, at that time, a aeroplane and all those things they In were Saraya. having. Yeah, yeah, sir, sir, yeah, yeah. Perhaps more than one aeroplane. डुमरी लेकिन फैमिली वहाँ रह रही थी ये मौका जब आया तो वहाँ पर गोरखपुर में वो जो एक परसेप्शन है वो उस इलाके ने भी दिया शायद वो कहीं लाहौर में रहती तो कुछ और बात होती ये भी बात है हाँ तो उस इलाके की पॉवर्टी ने उसको मटेरियल दिया पेंट करने के लिए और पॉवर्टी में जो अच्छाई है उसने भी मटेरियल दिया कि एक पुअर आदमी कितना अच्छा इंसान हो सकता है इससे वो बड़ी प्रभावित हुई और ये सबको प्रभावित करने वाली बात है गरीब आदमी अच्छा इंसान हो तो बड़ी अच्छी बात है ये जैसा कि आपने बताया कि उनके जो पेंटिंग में आम जनमानस के जीवन को व्यक्त करता है लेकिन उस रीजन के लोग अभी भी उनको उस रूप में नहीं देखते हैं देख ही नहीं पाते दिक्कत है कि, कि वो उनको एड, पता ही नहीं डिस्कनेक्ट क्यों है हाँ ये बात सोचने वाली बात है कि और सीरियस मैटर है कि अब तक क्यों नहीं प्रसिव किया गया और उसका कारण जो थोड़े से कारण मैं देख पा रहा हूँ कि एक तो उनको हमेशा एलिट सोसाइटी से कनेक्ट किया गया और उनका जो फैमिली का एलिटिसिज्म था उसको तरफ रखा गया और ये रखा गया कि ये हाई फाई सोसाइटी थी आम आदमी से इन को क्या मतलब था दूसरी चीज इनका लाइफ बड़ा शॉर्ट था बड़ा कंट्रोवर्शियल लाइफ था इनका तो लोग ख्याल ही नहीं करते लेकिन उनकी पेंटिंग या खुद वो इतनी इम्पोर्टेंट थी कि जब 1940 में जवाहरलाल नेहरू जब वहाँ गए गोरखपुर तो उनसे मिलने के लिए सराया भी गए वो और वो फोटो अवेलेबल है सारे और फिर वो सराय से नेहरू को छोड़ने के लिए गोरखपुर आई हूँ तो वहाँ वो लोग जानते थे जब मरी तो नेहरू और गांधी दोनों ने ही लेटर ऑफ वेरी टचिंग लेटर्स ऑफ कंडोलेंस उन लोगों ने लिखा नेहरू ने तो बहुत ही लंबा लेटर लिखा लेकिन गांधी जी ने भी लिखा ये ख्याल कीजिए कि एक तरफ ग्लैमरस लेडी ठीक है और दूसरे तरफ गांधी जी कभी कोई मिला नहीं लेकिन गांधी जी उनके बारे में लेटर लिख रहे हैं इसका अर्थ है कि प्रभावित थे बहुत ज्यादा प्रभावित थे उनसे यहाँ एक बात और सामने जो आती है आखिर अमृता से गिल के ऊपर किन का प्रभाव था क्या ऐसा कोई बुक्स या कोई पर्सनालिटी जिसका प्रभाव उन किताब के बारे में तो मैं अभी बहुत कुछ नहीं बहुत बतला सकता है लेकिन उस साउथ इंडिया की जो विजिट उन्होंने किया और जब सरैया को देखा उन्होंने वहाँ की गरीबी को देखा तो ये जो चीजें जो ग्राउंड रियलिटी थी उसने प्रभावित किया और वो अपने को रियल इंडियन मानती थी और वो कहती थी कि यूरोप वहाँ के पेंटर का पिकासो का वो सीन है हम इंडिया को ओन करते हैं मैंने इतनी नाइसिटी थी ये मौलाना आज़ाद कलाम आज़ाद जैसी बात है कि वो मुस्लिम थे और जब वो बोलते थे वो बोलते थे कि हमारा शेयर है मैं अलग का नहीं हूँ और बिना मेरे कुछ भी नहीं होता मैं ना मतलब मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी के यहाँ पर बात आगे नहीं बढ़ सकती तो ये बड़ी पैट्रियोटिज्म जो रियली जिसके पास होगा वैसा ही ऐसे वही आदमी ऐसी बात बोल सकता है वही अमृता शेरगिल उसी तरीके से बात बोलती थी कि इंडिया हमारा है और हम यूरोप दूसरे लोग डील करें मैं इंडिया को डील करूंगी और यहाँ नई पेंटिंग की स्टाइल मैं दूंगी मैं उसकी मदर हूँ बोलती भी थी और उनकी दिया और जो दिया 
और उस समय ये लाइक नहीं किया गया लोगों ने क्रिटिसाइज किया कि ये क्या पेंटिंग बकवास कर रही है गरीब आदमी ये क्या ब्यूटी की चीज है इसमें सब लोग उस समय डिस्करेज करते थे आ, उसको कई पुरस्कार उनको नहीं मिलते थे कई बार जो बहुत अच्छी पेंटिंग थी कोई पुरस्कार नहीं मिलता था लेकिन यूरोप में भी उनको मिला था और बाद में यहाँ भी मिलना शुरू किया जब वो मर गई हैं उसके बाद लोगों का ध्यान गया है कि अच्छा है ये तो वही काम कर रही थी कि जो गांधी जी कर रहे थे या नेहरू कर रहे थे आ, इस पर मेरा आर्टिकल है मैंने आ, इसमें बिब्लोग्राफी में देख दिया है आ, जो इंटरेस्टेड हों उसको पढ़े उनके सरैया वाले स्टे के बारे में नीचे नीचे ओके ये अच्छी बात आपने बनता है जैसे अगर किसी को और काम करना है तो क्या क्या वो पढ़ सकते हैं देख सकते हैं बिब्लोग्राफी यदि देख सके तो उसको इसके इसमें जो मेन किताब है वो डालमिया यशोधरा डालमिया का अमृता शेरगिल एलाइफ एलाइफ करके है ये पैंगविन की छपी किताब है टू थाउजेंड एट की दूसरा इकबाल सिंह की किताब है अमृता शेरगिल ये 1984 में है मेरा जैन सिन्हा मेरा आर्टिकल जो है अमृताज विलेज फ्रंट लाइन में ये मार्च महीने में उन्नीस इसी साल छपा है और विवान सुंदरम जो उनके बहन के लड़के हैं उनकी कई सारी राइटिंग है बायोग्राफिकल राइटिंग्स उनके हैं विथ प्रजेंटेशन ऑफ पेंटिंग्स ऑल्सो ये मेजर सोर्स हैं और बहुत सारे चीज़ों की जानकारी हो सकती है लेकिन अमृता के एक सर्किल से बाहर देखने का की जो बात है उसमें और भी रिसर्च होना जरूरी है कौन कौन से वो एरिया हैं जहाँ यंग जनरेशन या हिस्टोरियंस दे शुड टेक अप दैट पॉइंट एंड स्टार्ट रिसर्चिंग जी हिस्टोरियन हिस्टोरियोग्राफी में ऑलरेडी uh, एक सबल्टन स्कूल है सबल्टन uh, का एक तरह से समझिए कि जो मार्जिन में सोसाइटी जो नीचे तबके हैं uh, उनकी हिस्ट्री लिखने के लिए तो ऑलमोस्ट पेन अमृता का जो थीम है वो तो सबल्टन ही थीम है okay. और इसीलिए जो एलिट लोग थे इसको लाइक नहीं करते थे इस तरह की पेंटिंग को तो लोगों को फोकस करना चाहिए जो अमृता पर भी कर रहे हैं और उनकी और भी कई जगह पेंटिंग हो सकती है पेंटिंग का इंटरप्रटेशन भी हो सकता है बड़ी अच्छी बात हो कि लोग ये पेंटिंग पर जाएं हर पेंटिंग को लेकर और उस जमाने के उनके कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंस को देखें और बाकी हिस्ट्री और उस समय अखबारों में क्या प्रतिक्रिया आई उन सारी चीज़ों को लाएँ तो वो बड़ी अच्छी बात होती हो so there is no positivity of source ha uh, nahi source ki positivity nahi hai source ki positivity nahi hai hmm. aur inki main painting hai wo to um, gallery of modern art mein hai kyunki inki sare jo painting hai usko national heritage declare kiya gaya hai hmm. to kai sari painting to national mein hai lekin kai logon ne jo personal inke relation ke paas hain uh, wo to un logon ke paas hain यदि आ जाता है यहाँ नेशनल हेरिटेज के रूप में तो बड़ी अच्छी बात होती है लेकिन वहाँ भी वो ठीक रखें वो भी ठीक है उसके प्रिंट ऑफ प्रिंट्स लाए जा सकते हैं और मैं तो चाहूँगा कि जो जो इलाके से कंसर्न है इंक्लूडिंग गोरखपुर में कि इसको एनिवर्सरी के रूप में लोगों को सेलिब्रेट करना चाहिए उससे लोगों में एक जागृति भी आती ये वहाँ पूरे देश में तो एनिवर्सरी एरिया हाँ चल रहा है अलग अलग प्रोग्राम चल रहे हैं आ, लेकिन मुझे ये बात अच्छी नहीं लगी कि जिस बड़े पैमाने पर ये होना चाहिए था उतने बड़े पैमाने पर नहीं हुआ है देश में भी दिल्ली में भी उतने बड़े पैमाने पर नहीं हुआ और गोरखपुर जहाँ पर मेनली वो रही शिमला में भी रही शिमला में भी होना चाहिए लेकिन गोरखपुर में तो होना ही चाहिए क्योंकि वहाँ पर एकदम ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन के हार्ट का तीन जगहों पे खास करके वो उनको लाहौर शिमला और गोरखपुर गोरखपुर तो ये तीनों जगह की पेंटिंग पेंटिंग में कुछ अंतर आपको नजर आता है हाँ हाँ जैसे शिमला में है तो बहुत सारा वो पोर्ट्रेट कई सारा किया उन्होंने बड़े बड़े नवाब और उन लोगों जैसी चीजों की पेंटिंग की आ, उसी तरीके से थोड़ा सा फैमिली और थोड़ा सा आर्ट करके कुछ मेरे ख्याल से लाहौर के भी हैं उनके लेकिन सबसे ज्यादा एलिक्वेंट पेंटिंग जो है वो गोरखपुर का है एकदम आप खास अलग आप देख सकें उसको अलग लाइफ डिपिक्ट किया जा रहा है वो गोरखपुर में ट्रांसफॉर्म है जिसको मेटामोरफोसिस बोलते हैं वो मेटामोरफोसिस गोरखपुर में हुआ वी कैन से दैट दैट डिपिक्ट द कंटेम्प्ररी लाइफ ऑफ द कम पीपल ऑफ द टाइम हां ऑफ द टाइम ऑफ द टाइम 
देखा जाना चाहिए ओके और बल्कि अमिता शरील के साथ उनके फादर पर भी रिसर्च होना चाहिए कि उनके पॉलिटिकल जो ओरिएंटेशन थे वो वो अरिस्टोक्रेट थे लेकिन ग्रेट इंटेलेक्चुअल थे वो अरेबिक और संस्कृत के बहुत अच्छे स्कॉलर थे उसके बारे में भी वो कारपेंटर थे और शौकिया कारपेंटर थे तो उस पर भी होना चाहिए और गदर पार्टी से जुड़े हुए थे सो मित्रों जैसा कि आप लोगों ने सुना अमृता शेरल पर बहुत काम हुआ लेकिन उससे ज़्यादा काम अभी बाकी है बहुत कुछ करना है अगर आप करेंगे तो एक और उनके जो व्यक्तित्व का जो पहलू है जो अनछुए पहलू हैं वो सामने आएंगे और लोग जानेंगे और अप्रिशिएट करेंगे तो इन शब्दों के साथ आज के लेक्चर को यहीं विराम देते हैं आप सबको धन्यवाद और आपकी ओर से डॉक्टर जे सिन्हा को भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच